If you care about forests, you need to care about invasive species. Well, when I'm out here on the stream, I'm just working the stream. I'm not thinking about anything else besides maybe catching a fish, and enjoying this stream. Working on a farm, it's, I've spent a lot of time cutting out multifloras and thistles and things like that. And the more that come in, the less land you've got to graze, and you know the harder work you've got to have to keep it to where you can keep your farm going. I've seen evidence on a small scale of just deer transitioning from maybe one piece of property to the next because one piece of property has been overrun by invasives and it's no more of an area that the deer can use. When I'm consulting with the landowner about their forest management plan, we talk about their timber, their wildlife and wildlife habitat. They're non-timber forest products like ginseng and ramps and aesthetics. All of these forest resources are affected by invasive species. Invasive species to me are is an organism uh, that's not from around here, that's causing some damage, potentially uh, impacting native or naturalized species. Non-native invasive species are those that have no natural predators here in the central Appalachians. So nothing eats them, and therefore their growth goes unchecked. Well, I think if you look at the pathways of introduction, especially for fish, because I'm, I'm more of a fisherman than anything, you see bait being moved around is a big one. A lot of times you go out and buy shiners, you don't know what, what they're calling a shiner. It could be one of probably 20 different species. Is it a golden shiner? Is it a fathead minnow? Is it, is it a rud? That's an invasive species from Europe or somewhere. So we gotta be real careful with our bait. And if we're done fishing for the day and you still got bait left over, even though you might wanna liberate those little fellas, it's probably best just to take them home, throw some ice in there, and then put them out in the garden for fertilizer. A lot of places that I used to hunt in the fall for deer and there would always be you know a good mass crop a lot of acorns I see where gypsy moths have come in and these oaks either die or quit producing acorns altogether for a number of years and as this continues the trees weaken to a point where I've seen whole ridges of oaks die due to gypsy moth. The more numerous they become I guess the more it'll affect agriculture and when agriculture is affected then they have to spend more time working to remove them and spray them and cut them and all the time they spend on that makes more, well, it's less time they could be doing something else and then I reckon all your prices will go up. An example of an invasive species that I'm really concerned about is the Asian longhorned beetle. This beetle lays its eggs in hardwoods like maples and birches. The larvae feed in the sapwood and bore into the heartwood, eventually killing the tree and lowering the timber value. The most important thing for people to understand is that invasives, once they get established, are really hard to get rid of. And if they can catch it in the beginning, when they see Japanese stiltgrass coming in, when they see any kind of invasive coming in, garlic mustard, whatever it is, that they can go in and maybe pull the garlic mustard or spray the Japanese stiltgrass to kill it but to take care of it when they first see it and not let it get established and take over. I, we're all responsible for dealing with them. I mean, we all, anybody that owns the land needs to work to deal with them. And we just have to rely on other people to give us the tools and the knowledge to where we can appropriately deal with them and do it the best way we can. But we can't expect other people to take care of all of our problems. I care about invasive species because I want to protect the, the forests that are here and for future generations I, I want them to be able to enjoy the forests and the outdoors you know like I do. Invasive species are filling niches that 
are already inhabited by our native species. And the Central Appalachian Forest is the most diverse temperate forest in North America. I, I want to do my best not to spread invasives. Uh, I, want to, I want to preach to that. I want to try to convince my friends to take care of their equipment and their boat trailers and their live wells so we're not moving stuff around. Invasive pests and diseases don't spread very quickly on their own. When people move firewood, new outbreaks can start. So don't move firewood.